couple of years ago, I got myself a Switch. And as soon as it settled into my living room, there was one game that was compulsory for me to buy. There is a level of importance to certain video games that it's almost considered a crime if other people find out you haven't experienced them. So anyway, after I was forced by Nintendo at gunpoint to get Mario Kart 8, I got Breath of the Wild, the 23rd game in the series, and Jesus Christ, there are that many of them? Now, a little bit of context here before I get into the game. This is not my first game in the series. I played through Twilight Princess many years ago, and I really enjoyed it. It was a great adventure game that also had the gimmick of turning you into a good boy. And who doesn't love that? But the open world left a lot to be desired. It felt more like it would have benefited from just being a linear game rather than an open world, since the traversal and interactions that you had on the road weren't that satisfying to me. Because of this, I just tried to use fast travel as much as possible. So when I heard about a Zelda game where the whole focus was on the open world angle and that they'd cracked it, I couldn't resist the call to adventure. Now, I've brought up the adventure genre before in my last video on Uncharted. What is it exactly that we're drawn to in this genre? I would argue that it's the most versatile of genres, especially when it comes to video games, because we as people are so inherently curious. I know that when I was a kid, that curiosity made me trek a couple of hours to forests, mountains and rivers. That's what rural kids did before Fortnite came along, gang. So when you're given this as an adult, we are so engrossed in it. It feeds into our nature and also reminds us what it's like to have that call to adventure when we were kids. And there are a few games that do this as well as Breath of the Wild. Breath of the Wild also has one of the best tutorial spaces in the Great Plateau. Here, the game developers are able to steer you towards certain landmarks without marking on your screen and screaming at you to go there like some other games do. You're greeted by an old man who gives you a quest in order to get off of the Great Plateau using the rewarded glider upon completion. This gives you a focus to start with and also gives you a taste to what awaits following the plateau including ancients, goblin bases, dealing with harsh environmental conditions, and shrines to explore. After this, once you're ready to glide off the edge of the plateau, you have a better chance of staying in one piece. One of the things that really makes Breath of the Wild such a joy to play is the traversal in the game. You can climb, destroy, chop, burn, and use the environment however you want. In many games, there's a very specific way of getting over obstacles, but in this sandbox, there are many. Now, this is not the first sandbox game in the genre, far from it, but the way it's refined here in Hyrule constantly rewards your creativity and curiosity and leads to some insane discoveries if you're curious enough to explore. Now, speaking of discoveries, every one of the Zelda games has such a recognizable look to it. And Breath of the Wild is no different. The cell-shaded look of the world is an absolute joy to look at and works perfectly in tandem with the Studio Ghibli-esque music that they have playing throughout the title. It makes this entry into the Zelda franchise have its own look and feel somewhere between that of Wind Waker and Twilight Princess. It also works to great effect in the different environments of the game that Link explores in his preparation to fight Ganon, such as the mysterious Kurok Forest, the ominously named Death Mountain, where the mountain lives up to the name if you can't take the heat, Rito Village, home of the Burbs, perched on a rocky spiral, and the baking hot deserts of the Wasteland region where you get to surf the sands with a seal. Yeah, it's as cool as it sounds. All these regions are made so much more memorable and explorable due to its beauty in this art style, and why gamers for decades will still come back to this game for more. Another thing that I love about Breath of the Wild is how it takes you out of your comfort zone. This is true about many aspects of the game, from your approach to different enemies and the many environments you explore in the game. By forcing you to go up against these enemies and deal with different weather, the world never becomes boring and it allows the player to be creative. 
For example, going to a snowy mountain will deplete Link's health if ignored. But if you Martha Stewart a dish using the right ingredients, then it can give you a window of time in which you can explore the terrain. Failing that, you can also wear warmer clothes. If you have any to hand, or if all else fails, you can carry a torch with you and the heat will protect you. Now, one element which is often criticized in the game is weapon durability. Because your weapons keep breaking, Link keeps having to switch to new ones. Now, as annoying as this mechanic is in the game, I'm gonna be that guy and defend it here. Yes, I know, I can hear your comments through on the video just now, but if I may, everything the game does is to take us out of our comfort zones so that we can become better, more creative, and keep learning. It also allows us to try out all the different kinds of weapons the game has rather than us relying on the same handful. It makes the game a lot more immersive, and I hope the sequel Tears of the Kingdom keeps this in the game. Playing this game in preparation for this video really highlighted to me how brilliant an experience Breath of the Wild is. How, for a series as old as this one, the developers are always stepping out of their comfort zones, making bold creative strides while also making something that builds on what came before it without losing the history and identity of the Legend of Zelda series. It is a must play if you haven't already, and if you have already played it, you still know that after you see those planes again, you won't be able to resist that call to adventure. Hey guys, thanks for watching another one of our videos. If you haven't already, here's a cheeky side adventure for you. Why don't you subscribe to the channel and like the video if you enjoyed it for updates and all our new content. I've been James, and I will see you in the next side adventure.